Hey, how's it going everyone? Just back again with another one of these uh, Sequence of the End Times videos. And so I'm in uh, 2 Samuel now. And so this one, 2 Samuel 22. And just for the numerology people, this is 2 times 22 is 44. And so we expect um, something about salvation, deliverance, God's elect and all that. And so uh, it's exactly what it is. 2 Samuel 22, And David spoke to the Lord the words of this song on the day when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. And so, just a reminder, the sequence always begins with salvation and always ends with God's elect destroying everybody, you know, on earth with the mark of the beast. And so, um, in, the, in the last days, and then we see that sequence here. And so, we're looking for that first, and then it's going to be that salvation first, and then plagues, missiles, different wrath and all that. America being destroyed and then um, God returning with his elect, you know, to destroy. <clears throat> and we see that here. And so this is an amazing thing. Um, it's a bit longer, um, you know, because it's, uh, it's basically a prayer or a song. And, um, you know, but we see it, you know, in, in the proper sequence. Second uh, Samuel 22, 2, he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. So right off the bat, we get deliverance or salvation. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation. My stronghold and my refuge, my Savior, you save me from violence. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. You save me from violence. This again is alluding to the fact that um, the God's elect will not experience violence. You know, they're saved. So obviously they're not going to, you know, uh, be saved, you know, with like <laughs> their head taken off, like end times teacher teaches, which is retarded. Um, it's obvious, you know, it's before all the plagues hit. And then we have a reference to that here. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that's what it is, you know? And so, uh, it's consistent with the revelation 18, four and 18, eight, um, verse four, I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. Verse five, from the waves of death encompass me and the torrents of destruction assailed me. The cords of Sheol entangled me. The snares of death confronted me. She whole or hell and death are uh, all constantly together. And so um, it's an exa other example here. And that's not a coincidence in verse six, which talks about death um, and evil and all that. And so she whole or hell is a place that you have to experience death. And then wherever there's death, that's hell or she whole. And so they're one to one. And so, again, we know that it's a physical place. Verse seven, in my distress, I called upon the Lord to my God. I called a person can only be saved if they understand that they're in hell, because then they wouldn't need salvation. They would try and make this better. You know, that's the whole point of salvation is what David is saying here, that he needs salvation from Sheol or hell and death. So you're saved from hell and then you're saved from dying. That's what salvation is um, at, its, at its root. God's elect will not experience death. And so anybody out there who thinks that they're in God's elect, that circle, you don't have to worry about anything. Because you're not going to experience violence and you're not going to die. You know, and I say this to comfort people who believe they're in that elite group. And it, David tells us here how to be in that group. He tells us very explicitly. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. To my God, I called. From his temple, he heard my voice and my cry came to his ears. God hears the voice of his elect. That's it, pretty much. And so um, it's when they collectively cry out to him that, he will return, you know, and the days will be cut short for their sake. Verse eight, then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundation of the heavens trembled and quaked because he was angry. So now we see salvation. And so the next reference we should see is calamity on earth, plagues, you know, and all that kind of stuff. And it's right on cue. Verse eight, I'll read that again. Then the earth reeled and rocked. The foundation of the heavens trembled and quaked because he was angry. Um, smoke went up from his nostrils and devouring fire from his mouth glowing coals flame forth from him he uh, bowed the heavens and came down thick darkness was under his feet he rode on a cherub and flew he was seen on the wings of the wind he made darkness around him his canopy thick clouds a gathering of water out of the brightness before him coals of fire flame forth the lord thundered from heaven and the most high uttered his voice and he sent out arrows and scattered them this is referring now to america being destroyed according to Jeremiah 50, verse 9, um, by these arrows that don't miss. Um, lightning and, and routed them. Then the channels of the sea were seen. The foundations of the world were laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. And so 
the channels of the sea were seen is also referring to a plague in Revelation 16. And so, um, you know, just know that. And so this is a time of, of wrath, you know, the 1260 days, what I uh, refer to as Great Tribulation that Christ refers to as that in Matthew 24. Verse 17, he sent from on high, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. He rescued me from my strong enemy, from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. And so the Bible also says, who can make war with this beast? And so I'm giving up, you know, I'm happy about it. I, I can't win. I can't do anything at all um, to fight or win or anything like that. And um, we're told that here, you know, that um, God has made it this way, that the enemy is very strong and they and this system hates me and hates us, anybody, even if you talk, talk about low level truths, much less high level truths. And so um, this is we have no choice, you know, for a, a group of us. Verse 19 um, and that's in verse um, 16, or sorry, 18, 666. It also refers to the times that we live in now. He rescued me from my strong enemy. You know, this again, who can make war with this beast? It's rhetorical, no one, for those who hated me. So there's going to be, he's probably also prophesying a time where there's righteous people are going to be hated actively. And so just know that we're in, the, they were in those days. For they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. So now this is, he's giving us references to the fact that he, there, he's going to be brought back, you know, into, into a broad place. And we're going to read that later, that um, Christ elect returned to do the final cleanup. Verse 21, the Lord dealt with me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanliness, the cleanness of my hands, he rewarded me for I have kept the ways of the Lord and have not wickedly departed from my God. For all his rules were before me, for and from his statutes I did not turn aside. I was blameless before him, and I kept myself from guilt. And the Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his sight. So that's God's elect. And so that's why we know that uh, many of them have to be um, blind, poor, and lame. Like it says in Jeremiah 31.8, because they're the only people that can do that. <clears throat> Let's strive for that, of course. Verse 26, with the merciful you show yourself merciful, with the blameless, you show yourself blameless. With the purified, you deal purely. And with the crooked, you make yourself seem torturous. You, have, you save a humble people. And so just know that. We know who God's elect are. But your eyes are on the haughty to bring them down. For you are my lamp, O Lord, and my God lightens my darkness. For by you I can run against a troop. And by my God I can leap over a wall. This God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord proves true. He is a shield for all those who take refuge in him. For who is God but the Lord, and who is a rock except our God? This God is my strong refuge, and has made my way blameless. <clears throat> he made me walk like the feet of a deer, and set me secure on the heights. He trains my hands for war. This is now David referring to when he's going to return, you know. And so God is doing all this. Um, talking about a rock, and then returning in, in the Middle East, you know, to, to fight. <clears throat> and he's being and he's saying here he trains my hands for a war so that my arms can bend a bow of bronze you have given me the shield of your salvation and your gentleness made me great you have you gave a wide place for my steps under me and my feet did not slip so now he's talking about things happening beneath him so he's returning you know from the sky with Christ as well to do this final destruction i pursued my enemies and destroyed them and did not turn back until they were consumed. I consumed them. So he's saying he's doing it. I thrust them through so that they did not rise. They fell under my feet. So imagine you have these UFOs returning. And then David obviously is one of them. And he's just destroying everybody beneath his feet. These verses are literal, you know, and it's sequential. And so it's exactly what I was told on the first day of the last year. That uh, that's the way it's going to go. For you equip me with the strength for the battle. And so he's they're returning in... Um, um, God made vessels <clears throat> and you made those who rise against me sink under me this is literal everybody's underneath dying they looked but there was none to save they cried to the Lord but he did not answer them I beat them fine as the dust of the earth I crushed them and stamped them down like the mire of the streets and so this is again Christ returning uh, with his elect and of course David's one of them um, to destroy um, you delivered me from strife with my people. You kept me as the head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. Foreigners came cringing to me. 
As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. Foreigners lost heart and came trembling out of their fortress. The Lord lives and blessed be my rock and exalted be my God, the rock of my salvation, the God who gave me vengeance and brought down peoples under me, who brought me out from my enemies. You exalted me from above those who rise, rose against me. You delivered me from men of violence. That's the times that we live in now. For this I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations and sing praises to your name. Great salvation he brings to his king and shows steadfast love to his anointed, to David and his offspring forever. And so, um, verse 44 is very, very important. So the last verse that I read, I beat them fine as the dust of the earth. I crushed them and stamped them down like the mire of the streets. And so that's God wiping away everybody with the mark of the beast. And then verse 44, which is a symbolic of the elect, is now it refers to the the kingdom, you know, and so and the government of the kingdom is is God's elect. And you, so verse 44 is there on purpose. You delivered me from strife with my people. You kept me as the head of the nations. People whom I had not known served me. And so now we're talking about not people get, like dying, dust being, you know, um, fine as the dust of the earth. Now David's talking about people serving him from other nations. And that's exactly what it's going to be in the kingdom for the 144. Foreigners came cringing to me. As soon as they heard of me, they obeyed me. And so this is the, the elect ruling. And so there's always, if there is going to be more language, it's, they'll have a reference to the kingdom of heaven always. And so I, it's just obvious. Uh, foreigners lost heart and came, and came trembling out of their fortresses. So um, now that little chunk from 44 to 46 describes the kingdom, you know, and then who's going to be governing the kingdom is obviously one of them will be King David. And so... This is an amazing thing. You know, again, um, you will not find um, a narrative that is different than, um, than than that sequence. You just you just won't. I mean, it's everywhere. Um, God is inspiring these people to say these things. And the cool thing is God works the same way everywhere. And so, again, it's just different characters, you know, uh, different same spirits, just in different bodies with different technology. And that's it. But it's the same sequence. And all these... Um, cries really and all these songs and, and worship and all that are about these days you know everybody's been groaning for the end times because after that the leadership will be righteous you know and then the grooming will be done and then you'll have righteous rule on this earth obviously led by christ and so and then the hundred and forty four thousand, and then the mixed multitude which are from all nations and so that's going to be a peaceful ecosystem and rulership and then the directive is going to be set by god himself and so um, that's what we're looking forward to. Hope everyone's doing well. Bye.